Hello everyone, welcome back to the Declarative Academy's channel where we make learning Salesforce easy and fun. In today's video, we're diving into the Trailhead module. Understand the Salesforce architecture. If you're new to Salesforce or want to get a better grasp of how things work behind the scenes, this is the perfect place to start. By the end of this video, you will be able to explain key Salesforce terms, understand where to find trust information, and explore how Salesforce APIs work. Let's jump right in. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share. First up, what is the Salesforce architecture? It's kind of like a layered cake, but instead of delicious frosting, we've got cloud services, metadata, and AI tools powering the platform. Let's break it down. At the core of Salesforce's is trust, and they take that very seriously. But how does Salesforce ensure that your data is secure? Well, all Salesforce services operate in what we call the multi-tenant cloud. Imagine living in an apartment building. You have your own space, but you share resources like water and electricity with other residents. That's multi-tenancy in a nutshell. Your company's data stays private, even though it's stored in the same space as other companies. Here's where you can see real-time information about how Salesforce secures your data, performance updates, and any scheduled maintenance that could affect your access to the platform. Trust is central to everything Salesforce does, and this site is where you can check on that. Next, let's talk about Data Cloud. Think of it as a powerful engine that helps you manage massive amounts of data. It's not just a regular database. Salesforce calls it a data lake house, meaning it can handle both structured data, like customer records, and unstructured data, like social media posts or emails. One of the cool things Data Cloud does is make real-time data available across all Salesforce products, so you can make faster, data-driven decisions. Let's talk about metadata. It's basically data about data. For example, if we look at a property record in Salesforce, things like price, address, and number of bedrooms are data, but the fields where you input that data, the templates, layouts, and structure, that's metadata. Because metadata defines how data is stored and displayed, it helps you configure your Salesforce org without writing code. Now, onto APIs or application programming interfaces. An API lets different pieces of software talk to each other. In Salesforce, APIs are everywhere. Anytime you use a custom object or a field, an API name is created. This API allows apps like the Salesforce mobile app or even external systems to access data. Using APIs allows Salesforce to be flexible and integrate with any other system you need, whether that's for customer data, marketing campaigns, or analytics. All right, we've covered a lot. So let's review what you've learned with a couple of quiz questions from this module. Question one, where can you find information about how Salesforce secures your data, planned maintenance, and performance data? A, in a multi-tenant apartment building. B, trust.salesforce.com. C, data cloud. D, in the Salesforce API. The correct answer is B, trust.salesforce.com. This is Salesforce's dedicated site for transparency on trust, security, and platform performance. Question two, metadata refers to what? A, everything in your Salesforce org, including your customer and user data. B, a representation of your standard functionality without customizations. C, data about data. D, configuration-based modifications only. The correct answer is C, data about data. Remember, metadata defines the structure of your org. It's the blueprint that helps Salesforce work its magic. And that's a wrap on today's module. Now that you understand the Salesforce architecture, you're better equipped to build and customize in Salesforce like a pro. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And as always, leave your questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.